The novel All the Light We Cannot See is now on Netflix as a limited series starring Mark Ruffalo, Hugh Laurie, Lewis Hoffman, and newcomer Aria Mia Liberti. Now, is this World War II story a captivating drama, or is it a flailing piece of drivel? Marie Laure, a blind French girl, and her father Daniel flee German-occupied Paris with a legendary diamond to keep it from falling into the hands of the Nazis. Relentlessly pursued by a cruel Gestapo officer who seeks to possess the stone for his own selfish means, Marie and Daniel soon find refuge in Saint-Malo, where they take up residence with a reclusive uncle who transmits clandestine radio broadcasts as part of the resistance. Marie's path also collides with the unlikeliest of kindred spirits, Werner, a brilliant teenager enlisted by Hitler's regime to track down illegal broadcasts, who instead shares a secret connection to Marie, as well as her faith in humanity and the possibility of hope. Even though I mentioned her name last in the intro, Aria Mia Loberti is truly the star of this series. As the blind protagonist, Marie, Loberti delivers a captivating performance that feels 100% natural despite this being her very first acting gig. Director Sean Levy strived for authenticity with the casting of Marie, so he searched for a blind actress who could nail the part. After a worldwide casting call, the production found both the young version of Marie and the older one that we spend the majority of the time with. Now, had I not read that this was Liberty's starting acting job, I'd never have known, because she commands the screen with an enveloping presence, just disappearing into the role and more than holding her own with the other seasoned actors in the cast. I mean, she has charisma, excellent intuition, and some natural comedic timing, making her more engaging with each passing scene. But then she's complimented by the performances of Mark Ruffalo and Hugh Laurie, and they're wonderful on screen. But apparently, the accents for these supposed French residents they weren't a sticking point for the production. Neither Ruffalo nor Laurie have any sort of convincing French accent, with Ruffalo's wavering all over the place and Laurie staying much more in the British tone of voice. Now, these aren't areas that ruin the film, but it did stand out with the absence of the French accents. But then on the other side, with several of the German characters, they're portrayed by German actors, so the accent is perfect and convincing. Louis Hoffman, who I will always associate with Jonas from Dark, he plays the genius young radio operator who is forced to track radio broadcasts so that the Nazis can then eliminate any resistance fighters. Now, as Werner, Hoffman is excellent at showcasing innocence and trepidation. It's easy to feel the fear and hesitation that he has at being forced to do his duty. And it's so prevalent in his body language and his eyes, instantly conveying to us that he's forced into this situation and he would gladly be out of the Nazis' grasp. Now, the story as a whole, it's predictable, following a fairly simple trajectory. Some elements, I think, are meant to come about as surprises. I don't really think, though, the story is actually that clever or obscured that you can't figure out what's going on and what's going to happen well before it does. It's just like with the accents, I mean, this didn't ruin the story for me. I was much more enamored by the characters and their interactions than I was with the light mystery that was taking place. Now, even though we own the novel, I haven't read it yet, so I can't speak to how closely this series sticks to the source. But what we were presented with in the four episodes is a tight and concise narrative that paints not only a dreary picture of war, but also showcases a story that's filled with hope and determination. While those are at opposing sides, I mean, the contrast, it works well, crafting large amounts of dramatic tension, heartbreaks, and joyful anticipation. And when I say concise, I don't mean this is a short series, and each of the episodes is about an hour, so it's going to take a small chunk of time to binge. But there's very little fluff that's included. Story progression, it's efficient, creating urgency when needed for anxiety or excitement, and then using softer and quieter moments to detail out character interactions and development. And something I appreciate within the story is while the main portion of the plot centers around Marie, we do get a fair amount of time with Werner, seeing some of his upbringing and establishing how he became engulfed in the Nazis so we can sympathize with him and then understand the heart of his character. Now, one of the other main characters within the story is a German Gestapo officer who's pursuing Marie and her dad to obtain the rare stone. Now, the lore around the stone, it's intriguing, but it's also a bit vague in all that it's supposed to be able to do. And honestly, we don't need a Marvel Infinity Stone type of detailing on it. The point is that it's valuable, and this dude is after it. And the reason he's after it, though, it's also a little vague. I mean, we know his motivation, but I kept wondering what was going on with him that would lead him to such great lengths to find it. Now, I know I was a little obscure with that plot description, just so you can experience it for yourself. Some of the cinematography in this is stunning. 
The setting of Saint Malo is a walled peninsula type of location, kind of like a sprawling castle that's mostly surrounded by water. And the aerial shots we get of the city, they're wonderful. And well, I'm sure that a lot of it at points is digital or even just augmented to showcase war damage. The sunsets dipping below homes and buildings create a beauty that belies the tragedy that the town is experiencing. And I also appreciate the intimacy of so many of the scenes. Because Maria's blind, we're shown in detail how her hands move around objects and surfaces to deftly control or activate something. And the camera will also focus on her face, capturing the innocence and the beauty in her eyes and their incredible expressiveness despite not seeing what's in front of them. Now, I found it easy to become sucked into the story arc and binge the entire series. The drama that's created is enthralling despite its obviousness, and it's told in such a manner that I couldn't wait to experience the next portion of the story. One or two of the episodes, they end with a cliffhanger, which I think is a bit odd since all episodes drop together. But I guess if you're watching it and it gets late, and then you consider maybe saving some for the next day, that cliffhanger may entice you to keep the binge going. The emotional arcs that are created between the characters, they earn our attention, and for me at least, they were worthy of losing a bit of sleep in order to press on through the story. So overall, All the Light We Cannot See is a moving drama, using a battered and war-torn French town as its backdrop. Lewis Hoffman, Mark Ruffalo, and Hugh Laurie deliver wonderful performances, but they're wildly overshadowed by the presence and charisma of first-time actor Aria Mia Loberti. And for as enjoyable as the story is with emotional beats and anxiety-filled moments, what makes this a must-see series is Liberty. She dominates every scene, perfectly capturing the innocence, strength, and determination of a fighter who is way more adept and capable than the world assumes. Sean Levy struck gold in this casting, and I can't wait to see what else Liberty does on screen. And while some of the accents are unconvincing and trajectories are predictable, the draw of the story comes from the beauty of words that are shared across the airwaves, providing hope and calm in a turbulent time. There's no sex or nudity, some profanity, and a bunch of violence. I give all the light we cannot see four and a half out of five couches. And this was a stellar series. I hope you enjoy it just as much as I did. So what's something that you've watched lately that was just awesome? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.